Today, we're gonna to be going behind the scenes on an interview. And the more exciting part is we're gonna compare the A-roll footage between the Canon C70 and the Sony FX3. So let's get to it. Hello. We're here to film a video. <laughs> Very cool. All right. It's quiet. Low angle, all those guitars in the background. That looks awesome. I also just love, I mean, we have so much depth here to work with. Like this is, this is perfect. This is such a cool space. Very cool. All right, well, let's get to it. So now talking a little bit about the lighting breakdown, we had several different lights that we were using for this interview. The first light we were using as a key light was a 300D with a lantern on it. We switch back and forth between the lantern and the light dome, both Aperture products, a lot. They give different looks. The lantern usually is gonna give a little bit more of a fill, and then the light dome is gonna be a tiny, tiny bit more moody and direct. Um, so depending on what we're going for, we'll use both of them, but we went with the lantern in this situation and it worked out really well. Then going behind the subject, we had two lights back there. So the first one was a 120 with a uh, Fresnel lens on it. And that was basically just acting as a hair light. We were kind of motivating from a back window that actually ended up not being in the frame, but we were using that as a hair light. I think that was on about 10% intensity. So it was pretty low for a 120, but that just gave a nice little kick to our subject on camera. The last light we used in the background was the F22C by Amaran, but that turned out to really, really help us with the framing and lighting that we were trying to go for. We had some house lights that we wanted to keep on that were kind of highlighting the guitars, but the light was super, super warm. And so what we were able to do with the F22 was match the color temperature of those lights and then provide some additional fill on the guitars because without that fill light and just with those house lights on, it was creating shadows that were a little bit too harsh for what we wanted to go for. And so the F22 was really there to act as a little bit of a fill and just kind of provide some extra light at the right color temperature. So shout out to the F22 for saving us in that instance. Wow. Moody. Yeah, it was part of that big movie. You'd also prop the uh, guitar case up in front of that stuff, the paper towels and stuff, and have it more like up instead of on its side. All right, so just interjecting here, we just finished setup inside and we have started rolling the interview. I wanna talk a little bit about why we're using an FX3 with a C70 and how they're comparing so far. We've obviously been using Canon for the entire time we've been doing this little video thing um, between C70, C300, R6, all kinds of different Canon cameras. And then obviously I've shot with Canon for my whole filmmaking photography career. Um, lately though, Sony has been getting more and more enticing with their FX3, FX6, FX9. And so I've wanted to at least test out the system and see how it is and see if it maybe makes a little bit more sense at this point to switch to Sony than keep Canon. So we are able to borrow an FX3 um, from someone local here where we're at. And so we're basically doing a side-by-side -side comparison with the C70 and FX3, seeing how they're doing. First impressions, um, just staring at the screens. This is obviously before going into post, before looking at it, before really comparing um, all of sort of the readings and everything else. I'm really liking the way that the FX3 is looking from a color profile standpoint standpoint, shooting an S-Log3, um, and yeah, it'll be interesting to take them in to our computers and kind of compare them side by side, see how they look. But so far, really feeling pretty good about the FX3. It's going to take a little bit more time to 
kind of really figure out which one is right for us, whether we keep the C70s in the Canon ecosystem or if we switch to the uh, FX ecosystem, whatever it's called. I'm not really a Sony guy. So yeah, just wanted to hop in real quick. We'll get back to the interview. So we left the room to do that last little bit and now we have to go back in, but we have to wait until the person being interviewed is done answering their question. So that's a tip if you ever leave a room and you need to come back in during an interview, always wait until you hear the interviewer starting to ask a question so that you know it's safe to come in and make noise. Two hours later. All right, so I'm back in the office now a few days later after the shoot. Um, I have had a chance to review the footage, do a little comparison. So we prioritized the FX3 for the framing for the actual client video. And so that was the one that we kind of framed in first. And then we put the C70 right next to it, tried to get it as close as possible with the framing, but obviously they're not identical. And so just keep that in mind as you're looking between these comparisons. The framing does look a little bit nicer with the FX3 than the C70, but in providing my thoughts, I'm not using that as a factor in comparing both of them. So all of the settings between the two of them were basically identical. We tried to get everything as close as possible. The lenses are the one thing where there's some noticeable differences. So we're using a G Master 24 to 70 on the FX3, and then we're using a Sigma Art 18 to 35 on the C70. The big difference is that the FX3 is full frame and the C70 is a Super 35 sensor. So obviously the focal lengths are not going to be the same to get the same um, framing and composition. So for the FX3 with full frame, we shot at about 50 millimeters. And then the equivalent of that on the C70 was 35 millimeters. So one thing you'll notice between the two is that there is more compression in the Sony FX3 image. That is for a couple different reasons. So for one, it's a full frame sensor and essentially that means that you're gonna get a little bit more depth of field with uh, any image that you're shooting for the most part. The other part of that is that the FX3 is shot at 50 millimeters. And so you're gonna get more compression there than you are with a 35 millimeter lens. So the C70, you're seeing a little bit less compression, you're seeing a little bit less depth of field, again, trying not to use that as part of the comparison because these are just simply things that we are not able to um, control and, and match identically between the two of them. Another thing, just talking about color profile real quick, the C70 is shot with the C-Log2 color profile, which is basically what we use for everything that we shoot on Canon. And then the FX3 is shot in S-Log3 uh, cinema gamut profile. So they are, basically both the two best profiles that you can have on each of those cameras. Both of them have a lot of similarities between the looks, but then they also have a few differences. A really noticeable one, which I think is pretty common knowledge, is that Sony has more of a green and cool shift in terms of like color tone and temperature. And then Canon has a little bit more of a warm and magenta look and color to it. So once we took both of the files into Premiere and through the uh, appropriate conversion LUTs on, they both look pretty similar. They're both a little bit warm, but the main reason behind that is that we were shooting um, a lot of background light into the wall that was set at like about 4,400 to match some house lights. So obviously there's gonna be a lot of warmth coming off of that because our cameras were set at 5,600 to match our key light. In comparing the two color profiles and everything else, they look pretty similar. It's really, really hard to tell the difference to uh, an untrained eye, I would say. And even a trained eye, it's a little bit hard to tell the difference. I'm really gonna be looking for your guys' thoughts in the comments below on this part because color and the whole Sony versus Canon debate is such a controversial, bias, opinionated topic that everyone has their own thoughts on it. Everyone has their own preferences. And so I really wanna hear from you guys what you like. I like certain things about both of them. And so I'm not really sure if there's a clear winner here. I think Sony overall in this situation took a little bit less time to get it to the right look and color and temperature and contrast and all of that stuff. The Canon took a little bit more time, but I also think that maybe that has something to do with C-Log2 being a little bit flatter than S-Log3, but who knows? I'm no color scientist. All right, so closing it out now, I think that both cameras win in their own ways. Um, we are definitely considering looking into the FX3, FX6 as a possible option to switch over from Canon. Pros and cons to both cameras. 
and this is probably not going to be the last video that I'm going to make talking about these two cameras. It is the age old argument Canon versus Sony and I don't think it's going to be solved or answered anytime soon. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one.